Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Tuesday, December 13th. We've got to do, um, we've got to do it today because people are busy tomorrow and out of town, things of that nature. But anyway, um, we're going to do what we ordinarily do just a day early. That's read our lectionary texts uh, here at First Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us today. We're going to get slightly different songs because we hardly ever do this on Tuesday. Tuesday. Right. So I think that'll be good. We'll see what the Lord has for us. Let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you for this day. The many blessings that you have provided for us. Um, Honestly, Lord, help me to uh, calm my heart today um, and be able to read your word and be transformed by it. Lord, I'm grateful that you are a God who wants us to live in the reality of your peace and your presence. And so I pray, Lord, that today as we read these words, that we would be transformed by your Holy Spirit into the people that you would have us to be. We thank you and praise you. And it is in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, today, starting with Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with a lyre. Make melody to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Our Old Testament prophecy today from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. 
He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And in the New Testament from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12, verses 12 through 21. Therefore, I intend to keep on reminding you of these things, though you know them already and are established in the truth that has come to you. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not know, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him in, on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit from God. Our gospel reading today is Luke chapter 22, verses 54 through 69. Then they seized Jesus and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house, but Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at, G uh, stared at Peter and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And our psalms for, um, second set of psalms, Psalm 85. For you are favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear that what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. And our final psalm today is Psalm 94. O oh Lord, you God of vengeance, you God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth, give to the proud what they deserve. O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exalt? 
They pour out their arrogant words, all the evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the stranger. They murder the orphan. And they say, the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob does not perceive. Understand, O dullest of the people, fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, he who teaches knowledge to humankind, does he not chastise? The Lord knows our thoughts, that they are but an empty breath. Happy are those whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law, giving them respite from days of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. For justice will return to the righteous, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who rises up for me against the wicked? Who stands up for me against evildoers? If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought, my foot is slipping, your steadfast love, O Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Can wicked rulers be allied with you, those who contrive mischief by statute? They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold, and my God, the rock of my refuge. He will repay them for their iniquity and wipe them out for their wickedness. The Lord our God will wipe them out. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. That's a little harsh to end on that. <laughs> That's a little, yeah. So it is interesting uh, doing this on a Tuesday rather than a Wednesday. Um, now, I know there have been times that we've done um, midweek connections during the week, like during uh, Lent and things like that. And so I know that we have read that particular song before with one of these times. Um, but it is interesting how this Psalm 94, this cry to God for vengeance, um, what an interesting contrast between Psalm 94 and what we read in both 2 Peter and in Luke. Um, if we jump into that 2 Peter one first, here is Peter writing another letter to people that he might, um, again, share some teaching, talk with them about right. uh, you know how, how Jesus wants us to love one another and things. And he starts this whole thing out basically saying, I know that I'm about to die. Uh, Peter himself is in prison. Peter is recognizing that his end is coming. Um, but what's interesting about it is he he doesn't seem um, he doesn't seem bitter against his captors at all. Right. He's not calling out a Psalm ninety four vengeance on on those captors. In fact, what he ends up doing is he describes uh, his eyewitness not even to the uh, not even to the death and the crucifixion, well, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, he's pointing back to being the eyewitness on the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. This uh, wonderful event that he witnessed where Jesus and, uh, and, and invited Peter, James, and John to the top of the mountain. They go up there and Jesus is transfigured. He becomes uh, glowing, bright white like, uh, like lightning and Moses and Elijah shows up and the voice of God coming down saying, this is my beloved son uh, with whom I'm well pleased. And for that, that was a pivotal moment in Peter's life, um, recognizing that Jesus was the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament, uh, everything that they had been waiting for, uh, every, uh, um, every promise that God has made was fulfilled in Christ. Uh, even prior to his death and resurrection, that, that being called God's son, being identified with Moses and Elijah, uh, the law and the prophets, uh, God uh, giving that seal of approval on Jesus, and that totally transformed Peter's life, such that here he is in prison, and he's willing to go to his death to continue to proclaim that good news right right well it was you know the you know we ourselves heard this voice from heaven and so they believe in god obviously 
and it just affirmed what they were seeing. And then in that, then also recognizing that was he's acknowledging the prophets and looking back at the prophets, recognizing that the prophets, that power and that authority with which they spoke was not of human authority or human. Right. He recognizes that it was the power of the spirit. It was a work of the spirit and right. that those prophecies did come from God. Absolutely. Um, and, it, and it is interesting talking about how uh, how do we understand Scripture um, and how I love how uh, Peter talks about it's not, not, not a matter of one's own interpretation because it wasn't by human will, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. And so this has always been a challenge in churches. Uh, how, how do we as believers, um, how do we understand God's word? How do we have it rightly interpreted? How do we have it rightly preached? How do we have it rightly lived? And how how there how come there's such a difference sometimes of opinion between people even within the same church and right. and those kind of things. And again, I think that's where community is better for this. Uh, again, it's not a private interpretation. This is a community interpretation. Right. Uh, this is a huge reason why God calls us to be in relationship with other Christians that we can share the word together, that we can pray about it together, that we can compare. Uh, you know, the, the words all, all throughout Peter's work or Paul's work or whatever they might happen to be, all those things, compare them together and come to that interpretation. So jumping back, uh, coming to a right interpretation or a, a better interpretation even in the sense of none of us are perfect and right. we're always needing the Spirit to, to better explain things to us. Um, but even jumping back to the Luke 22 passage, how that is a very strong contrast to Psalm 94. Um, Jesus willingly is subjected uh, to the, the pre-crucifixion beatings and mockings and all right. of that kind of stuff, and he doesn't retaliate. Right. And all of this wickedness, all of these, um, you know, well, like you said, the verbiage of Psalm 94, all of these things that the, these people would fit into all of those categories, and yet they seemingly have the upper hand. Mm -hmm. Right and um, you know, yeah. How does like how does that work, right? And it's like I thought this is what Jesus was coming to take care of, and here he right. is being subject to those very people. And so, and so again, I think if we look at it, uh, uh, all of the promises were verified for Peter anyway at that Mount of Transfiguration. And we can see even Peter's own anguish in the Luke passage of watching Jesus then be crucified. And wait, how, how can they crucify my Lord? How can they crucify the one that stood on the mountain with Moses and Elijah? How can they crucify the one that is the fulfillment of everything they claim to be waiting for? Um, and he had, so you look back at the Peter passage and he's speaking and he's proclaiming. And you look at this Luke passage and there's doubt, and there's denial, right? And there's fear, right? Same person. Mm -hmm. I think you know sometimes when we feel like we may have questions or doubts, or um, then we go, "What's wrong with me?" But I think that's human nature, mm -hmm. and you know that doesn't undo what Jesus did. It doesn't take away that grace. It doesn't take away the promises. It's just that's when I think we have to lean in and trust and that we have to then look to the Spirit for interpretation. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Peter in these moments, I mean, he was. He was fearful. He's watching this. You know, I, I don't want that. Right. I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. Because well, his interpretation of Psalm 94 would have been really different, right? right? This cannot be happening. I had my interpretation of Psalm 94, that God is going to be the one to stop all these things right this moment, right. and then it doesn't happen. And so uh, I think even from a prophetic word, um, remembering and recognizing that, that as Christians, and I know we've talked about it regularly here, that we live in this tension between that which has already happened right. and that which has not yet fully happened. Um, and I think this is a good time to jump back to the Isaiah passage. Uh, where uh, Isaiah chapter 9 
where here is again Isaiah talking about um, you know, the yoke of their burdens and the bar across their shoulders and the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian, that, that the people that had been oppressed and the people uh, that were waiting for the Savior, they're, they're going to get this. Obviously that line from uh, verse six, for a child has been born to us, a son given authority is on his shoulders. Um, that, that wonderful cadence, you know, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Uh, we look at that and we read that and we go, yeah, that's exactly what we right. want. This is what we've been aiming for, what we've been waiting for all these all these years. And then it is fulfilled in Jesus, um, not totally, completely. Not fully, because there is another coming. Right. Uh, another coming when maybe Psalm 94 is then rightly interpreted. Right. Yeah. Uh, the uh, earlier psalms, like the Psalm 33, uh, where just the, the, the recapitulation of the creation that God had, uh, um, why do we praise the Lord? Because God created everything, God is worthy right. to be praised, all of these things. Uh, but then how that psalm concludes, our soul waits for the Lord, he is our help and shield, our heart is glad in him because we trust. Um, and that's one of those things, waiting, trusting, it's this season of Advent that we're in. Uh, we, we remember that God fulfilled his promises in Jesus, and yet we still wait uh, for what God is going to be working in our own lives, right. uh, but then also in the rest of creation. He, he owns it all. His timing is right. perfect. He's going to do what he's going to do at the right time. He's going to interpret his own psalms in the way they're supposed to be interpreted, not with a, you know, to use the theological uh, $10 word, you know, over-realized eschatology. It's not that everything has been completely fulfilled, um, but it will be fulfilled. Right. Uh, but even in our own lives, you know, we think about um, loved ones that have passed away that are, that are now present with the Lord in faith, um, how they have realized uh, the end. They have realized their purpose that God had created them for. Um, and we wait for that. And so like Peter, knowing he's about to die, trying to encourage his followers, his disciples, um, stay steadfast. Right. Hold on to those good teachings. Uh, remember, we were eyewitnesses to it. We saw these things. Right. You can trust us. Um, so for, for those of us who have not with our physical eyes, right. seen Jesus, uh, but we believe because we have the testimony of people who did, right. and we have the presence of the Holy Spirit, right, right, so right. that too. Hmm. I love Psalm one forty six. Uh, I know we we're just kind of yeah uh, going through, but uh, Psalm one forty six. Uh, the sort of end of uh, verse seven, you know, just the, the Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up, lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Um, sometimes I think we can assume greater responsibility sometimes than we have the capacity to solve. Like, you know, we, we are meant to be, we are called to engage in these ministries. And in fact, this is the way that God actually largely serves these people. He serves right. them through, through, his, through, people. through his people, through right. us, through you, um, as you serve. Uh, uh, but it's one of those things where I think if we try to do this out of our own strength or our own skills, um, that we, we fall short needs to be, we need to do these things in dependence upon the Lord. The Lord is the one who does these things ultimately, right? And I think that Peter passage, by saying that, you know, no prophecy has been issued without the power of the Spirit, it's the same thing. The power and the abilities that we have come from and are found in Christ, mm -hmm. not through our own um, doings. And so that recognition of and those first two psalms that we read, 33 and 146, you know, it speaks to the power of God and, and his role as the authority. And that's 
you know, that scene as we were reading through, that is apparent throughout mm -hmm. all of these scriptures for today as well, which, I mean, obviously that's apparent throughout, but... Right? <laughs> you mean it's a cohesive story? It's a pretty cohesive, yeah, it's a pretty story. cohesive story. It is interesting today, you know, talking about the open the eyes of the blind and, and all of that. Um, and I believe it was the Psalm 94, 94 that you finished with. The, the verbiage, you know, it's talking about the lifts up or takes care of the orphans and the widow. And it's like, well, the wicked is destroying them. But it's exactly the same verbiage used. Right. And so it's just interesting, that contrast. But then the affirmation of the power of the Spirit and the power of God. And anyhow. Yes. Yeah. And in all these things, Jesus went willingly to his death in order to ultimately break that power of the wicked. Right. And, right. and you know, I, I, I guess he could have, maybe it could have been done a different way, but I don't know. These are the things that, you know, you have to trust right. that God knows what he's doing. It's right. just like he came down right. on the mountain, he's fulfilling the law, he's fulfilling the prophets, and he sacrificed himself. Not the way I would have chosen to do right. it. You know, right. I would have probably come down with a heavy hammer and smashed everybody and said, yeah, take that, you wicked. But... But something different needed to be done. Well, in in that Luke passage, you know, yes, he's being mocked, he's being beaten, he's all of these things, and, and these wicked things are being done to him, and it's and he doesn't fight back. Right. And yet he is victorious. Right. And and well, verse sixty nine, you know, but from now on the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Right. Okay. So you can't, no matter what you do, you can't You're break that. You're not going to believe me. You're not going to answer me. But I do have the power. Right. Hmm. All right, Jesus. I'm glad he's got this. <laughs> right. <laughs> because I really don't. I'd be like, what? I'd be like Peter going like, wait, no, it's supposed to be a different way. Yeah. And then you see these things and you go, oh, wait, yeah, that makes more yeah. sense now. My interpretation was wrong. Jesus had a better way to do it. Right. The only way, I guess. From death to resurrection. I, I keep thinking about that. How many times do we need to die to ourselves in order to truly live the lives that God wants us to live? Constantly. <laughs> right? Pretty much. And Not we, an easy task. And we but don't want to die. <laughs> no, we want... Right. We want what we want. Mm. Okay. And that's. No. But there is a better way. There's a better way. There's a better way. Sounds good. You want to close us in prayer? I would be happy to. Excellent. Gracious Lord, thank you for these words to us today, and uh, thank you for our time together. And I pray that as uh, as we hear these words and as we share these words and others hear them, that we do take them, and. Um, that we take them to heart and that we can be transformed um, into the people that you call us to be and that we can turn to you in trust and turn to you or turn to you with trust and turn to you in um, times of trouble and, and uh, lack of understanding and just know that you do have this and that we do have the presence of the Spirit and that we can find peace in that presence um, with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed our reading today. And blessings to you. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.